Hey, it's Clay. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to continue my overview and explanation of the single-ended EL34 combo that I have built or kind of am still in the process of building. Uh, this is going to focus more on the construction of the amp. Uh, I just went over the circuit of the amp in a previous video, so see that if you wish for that information, but this is going to focus on the construction techniques. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take any video of this, so I apologize. I'm going to rely more on my pictures and the information provided in this uh, thread, and I'm going to give more of my analysis of the build, kind of reflecting on it as now that it's completed. So to start, I fabricated my own chassis from scratch. I don't really love buying pre-made chassis. I feel like they're pretty expensive. They're really nice, and I totally get that, but a chassis is a very simple and straightforward thing, and and I, in my opinion, it's not really needed. You know, I, I've made a couple of really nice amps out of cake pans for $15, and so um, I kind of wanted to give my hand, take take my shot at fabricating one from scratch. Uh, so all of these materials came from my local Ace Hardware store, but you could probably find something similar to Lowe's or a Home Depot or something like that. This I just bought is a uh, 18 by 12 uh, weld, just flat piece of welding steel. Um, and then this is a, th a 90 degree angle. Um, piece of aluminum and I tried to get them thick enough I think that this is 22 gauge steel and the aluminum is slightly thicker uh, in hindsight I maybe would go with something even thicker than that just because it's not it, it works fine and it's not going to be a problem but I am going to need to you know put some supports under here just because this steel with the heavy transformers loaded to it is not completely rigid so um, but again, my I, objective here was to, um, I cut the, the angle iron down and I'm just going to use this piece of steel as is. I, I sanded it a little bit to, to prevent the corners from being rough, but I'm, I'm not actually going to cut it. Um, so with, with the aluminum, I found using a Dremel with this cutoff wheel attachment was the easiest way to trim that down. And then I ran it over the belt sander. To um, this actually, this first line was not correct, so ignore that. But just to flatten it and to smooth it out, that actually worked really nicely. Then I also decided that this was because this is going to be my faceplate. I wanted to kind of give it a more a better appearance, so I actually sanded it down 120 grit, uh, 240, 320. You can really see it kind of giving this more brushed aluminum look, which I really enjoyed. I think I finished off with a scotch brite pad, and I just, I'm really pleased with how that turned out for the faceplate. And then I simply s drilled some three holes and, and screwed them together. So a very kind of rudimentary chassis fabrication method, but I think this is going to work fine. Then I'm going to rely on the wooden combo enclosure to supplement around the sides, and then I'm going to have maybe a support or two in the middle. Um, so from there, now we're starting to drill some holes. I find at this stage that you just kind of start marking stuff using a tape measure, and I also re started using a ruler, which I'd really recommend that helps make things nice and straight. But you're really just kind of winging it, um, on, in my opinion. Now, one of the things I try to do is I try to space out my components. You can see I've got my input jack here, and here's my V1 tube. I want those close together, and then the circuit's going to kind of flow in this direction. Um, away from the input jack and I got my power transformer and my filtering section is going to be as far away from the input as possible. You really don't want, you know, the, the 400 volts of high, you know, high B plus voltage near your very sensitive input signal. Now, I just want to touch a little bit on this. One of the things I love about making these build threads is I always learn a ton about what I am doing. Uh, I did a whole big deep dive into negative feedback. I initially was planning on including negative feedback in my circuit, uh, but I learned a ton in this thread, and I just would recommend you kind of take a look at this. This is my my really teaching myself. You know, so if you've ever wondered, well, you know, with negative feedback, why do you use the value of the resistor that you use? You know, I, I believe I talked a little bit. I didn't really talk a little much about that in my the video I did on my Epiphone Valve Junior negative feedback. Um, you know, incorporating the negative feedback into different places in the circuit, for example, going into the V2A cathode here, or, you know, what if I would have gone back further? What if I would have gone further forward? 
all those design choices, I kind of collected information on that in here. Now, I also got some really nice input that I hadn't really been thinking, but anytime, one of the things you need to think about in your circuit is the idea of phase and phase inversion. What I mean by that is whenever a signal runs through uh, a, a gain stage, you know, one of these 12 x 7 gain stage, the phase is actually flipped. And then furthermore, uh, a, a uh, capacitor also will flip the phase by 90 degrees. So you have all this crazy um, phase flipping going on. For example, you know, if the signal coming in here at V2A, for example, the signal coming in here at V2A is going to be flipped 180 degrees, and then, f you know, it's going through this cathode. Um, then we've got all these these capacitors flipping at 90 degrees, then they're EL34 still to come. So if we have negative feedback coming here, we've got this 25UF cap here, and then we've got each of these caps, and it just would have been very possible that it would have been flipped poorly in a way that the phase is not meshing and creating problems. Uh, so I actually, based off of all this feedback, chose not to actually implement negative feedback at all in my amp. So now continuing on fabricating the chassis, I drilled the front holes. One of the things I found that's easy to do is using the drill with a smaller bit is always a nice way to start just to get that initial hole drilled and then you slowly bump up to larger and larger bits. Uh, I just found that that works a lot better and then ultimately I've got a stepped drill bit that I used to like make these big holes for the for the tubes or for the on off switch. It just was a really much nicer way to do it. I did also use the Dremel to I used first used the drill to do a bunch of holes around the edge of this big cutout and then use the Dremel to kind of round and smooth it and, and grind it so it worked nicely. Now you can see here where I'm starting to implement my <coughs> starting to implement my terminal strips and just getting more components mounted. Now on this one I am by try I've attempted to kind of go with this very small low part light bulb for a um, on an indicator switch and I don't really know how good that's going to be and I may do something else I'm not really much of an electrical expert but um, still kind of tinkering around with that even as we speak right now so if you have any input on that please let me know uh, on how I should do that alright so at this point now um, I just was going to begin, this is kind of a part way through the process of wiring up the amp. Um, as you can see, my uh, daughter decided that she really wanted to paint my amp. It did not look good enough, so we decided to paint it one day. Um, and, you know, we uh, went through things and had a good time painting it, just the two of us. So it was kind of a fun little project in a way to um, incorporate that. Now this is more of a completed process. Just let's take a brief moment. I'm not going to go through every component here, but you know, we've got our input jack right here. Signal comes in. Uh, got an, an, the 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 one meg resistor is right on the input jack, and then the grid stopping 33k is right there as well. It goes into this terminal strip here. Then we've got two green wires that go to the grids of each of the 12x7 triodes. Then we've got you know cathode bias cathode bypass, you know, all of our V1 stuff is here. This yellow wire is bringing our high voltage onto the plates. And then um, we're also sending that signal up here. These are our two volume controls. Okay, out of the volume, the, the initial volume control, we go to the mixing resistors. And then this is our V2, where we've got our cathode follower circuit. And that is feeding up here into our tone stack. So we've got this is our treble pot. Uh, treble mid bass lift switch then out of the final treble we come to this master volume control for the master volume we go into the grid of the EL 34 and all of the componentry here on the EL 34 then this right here are our two large filter caps these are dual um, you can see 50 UF 500 volt caps so they actually have there are four total in two capacitor enclosures and then I just wired I, I decided to hot glue and zip tie them to the chassis and then the dropping resistors are 
just on the terminals of the capacitors themselves. Now, one thing I will say about this type of a setup in hindsight is it's kind of permanent. And so if, if I would ever have to swap out a filter cap, it would actually be a pretty large pain in the rear because you'd have to take off the dropping resistors and, and it would just be a, yeah, kind of annoying. So if I were in a perfect amplifier build, I would probably instead choose to um, put some terminal strips here and, and wire it up a little bit more kind of quote unquote correctly. Then um, we've got our diodes right here. Now I went with actually two rows of two 1N4007 diodes just for an extra layer of protection. You really only need two of them, one on each. But I just went with two in series for a total of four on each little side, two, on, two, on, two, on, two in series on each side just for that extra bit of protection in case one were to fail. They're so cheap, I uh, might as well do it. Some other thoughts of note. Uh, this point here is actually my kind of power side ground point. You can see my power, my filter caps are grounding here and everything on the power tube is grounding here. Whereas my preamp ground point is over here and over here. Now, with this amp, I actually wasn't as careful on the grounding scheme as I maybe could have been. For example, um, the input jack is just grounded to the chassis. The output jacks are just grounded here to the chassis and then actually daisy chained, which none of that is actually probably the best practice. Um, ideally, you would actually want to isolate these from the chassis and then run leads kind of to a star system. Or, yeah, there, there are definitely better ways that I could have done the grounding scheme in this amp, but that's what I just decided to go with. All the wires that I tied off are over here. They were heat shrinked and, and taped together. Then over here we've got the primary input side. Um, this right here is where the IEC cable's coming in. Here's our master safety earth, power switch, fuse. Then I wired the light in parallel, but I think that I need to fix that. And then um, we go back into the transformer over here. So just some more close-up shots of my wiring, if you wish to see that. Little tip here for filament wiring. First of all, I, I chose to do it towards the end of the amp build. Um, you can see they're in this picture, but in some of these other ones, they, they actually were not completely done yet. Um, I would actually recommend doing it first just because it's kind of a pain in the rear. And this is a tip for quickly and easily. I just, just cut off a long run of wire solid core, stuck two ends in the two ends that I cut off in my drill, chuck of my drill, and then the little circle on the a loop on the end goes around some object, and then you just slowly bring it to tension while you are drilling, circulating the drill, and that will actually wind it for you, and it does a really nice job. I didn't at some point switch out the IEC cable, just the plan that I had done with that previous one wasn't gonna work, so this is just a computer cord. And then, yeah, now we go to startup. Um, my startup procedures are pretty much exactly what I would follow on this link. So go ahead and, and read that information if you wish. You can find my voltages, and then ultimately it worked first time. So um, this is kind of the image of the amp on initial startup, and it was working correctly. So pretty excited about that. Then I also do want to com comment on my EL34 bias. Uh, you can see here's my plate voltage. Here's my voltage drop across the... You, know, you, you can check all these calculations if you wish, but ultimately I got to this point, which is just about pretty, pretty close to that, uh, which actually could have been a fine spot to leave it. Um, eventually I decided to... Um, you know, this this really was not so crazy of a, of a bias, and I really could have just left it had I wished. But, you know, I, w I was experiencing a little bit of a weird issue. Um, I had to kind of rewire some of the tone stack, and then ultimately I did actually change my resistor value 
a little bit now that I went too far and I got down to 18 watts. And then I actually bumped it back up a little bit. And I think I'm currently at about 21 watts um, and, and was pretty pleased with where I was at there. You can see this is kind of an update. You know, I'd initially put down my, my estimated voltages. This is where they actually came out at, which is, I think, kind of interesting to see. You know, one of the interesting parts, this V1B actually was almost was you know within 20 volts which is which is pretty darn close I think and overall yeah I was pretty pleased with how it came out and uh, yeah feeling good about this amp I definitely learned a lot and if you guys have any other questions please let me know use this thread as a reference and then stay tuned for some tone clips so thanks a lot for checking it out guys I hope you enjoyed